and then when um, they fill the when we build the new library, it'll take a few seconds. Yeah. Like, um, so up here, um, we have a natural yeah. library, um, um, that Another question. That oh, sure. Mom, probably won't have this. I, I came to Bloomingdale to get a paper library. And um, I can give you lots of information about that wonderful, really getting it for me. And um, we also have a, um, an exhibit of the founders, the six founders of that library who took over this building after it went to the library. After, after the presentation, you come upstairs and join us, and I'll be glad to explain anything you want to know and tell you all about the movie tonight. Well, I'd also like to make an announcement that uh, Highland Trail Senior Living on the corner of 135th and Carey, they are having a veteran's breakfast tomorrow, free charge, complimentary. Uh, it starts at 8 in early 100, 8 o'clock in the morning. And you can be there a few minutes early. That would be great to be able to sign in and get in. Uh, and it's for any veteran that wants to attend. However, we do need to take um, a, a roll or, or a, a number of people so they know how much to expect. And there is no limit. So if you would like to attend the breakfast tomorrow morning, they're really hungry. I would trail. Please see me. Put your name down, or you can see Gertrude. Great, Gertrude, raise your hand. She's in the back here, and uh, you can see either one of us, and we will uh, put your name down and uh, put you there as uh, one of the right. Okay, and we also, I have some of these if you want to uh, pass those. Do you want to pass those around? Yes, sir. Okay, we'll just, if you just pass those around to everybody uh, so they can see them. Okay. Uh, secondly, now, thirdly, thirdly, I'd like to introduce Morgana Meeker. She is the honorary chapter leader. Honorary chapter leader, the Auburn Bear Trailers. And they are here today to pass out take shot guidance to veterans, all veterans, but uh, especially veterans in Vietnam War, in commemoration of the Vietnam War which is the March 29th, March 29th, the uh, actual date of the very end of the of the Vietnam War. So in the, uh, which I don't know if I'm going to talk to you then, but she's also going to talk about the <laughs> That's called bribery. <laughs> All right, well, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for having us join you. Um, as chair, we are part of the Front Range Chapter Daughters of the American Revolution, and we have several of our chapter members here today, as well as several of our officers, and we do have our current regent, Joyce Thomas, um, with us today. So we are here in honor and celebration of Vietnam War um, Veterans Day, and this was something that was actually signed into uh, act on uh, March 29th of 2017 by President Donald Trump, and it's called the Vietnam War Recognition Act. And what that does is it separates out the uh, Vietnam veterans and honors them for the service. How many of you were Vietnam veterans? <laughs> Thank you all for your service. So the reason the date of March 29th was selected is on March 29, 1973, that is when the military assistance in Vietnam was disbanded and the last of the troops left Vietnam. And so it's a very significant date. It is different than Veterans Day, which was celebrated on November 11th, or Armistice Day. That one is actually in commemoration of the end of World War I. So on um, Vietnam War Veterans Day on 29th, it still is a national holiday. You still should fly your flag and show your peace flag. So thanks for uh, having And we do have cupcakes, as well as those of you who have better not received a bag, we do have these bags that have a lot of different patriotic literature in that members will be sharing as well. Okay. Thank you. Uh, 
go to youtube.com backslash Brookfield Diner. And then look for a folder which shows us to say coffee and conversation. And uh, it should show up, hopefully, if things work. So like plan. Uh, I have a handout in the back table there uh, with Professor Morpong's uh, student uh, kind of short bio and a map of the scheme frame. So if you wanted to kind of follow this talk, uh, the map would be quite useful. Um, our next speaker for the month of April will be Robert McConnell. And Bob really had a very fascinating career. Certainly 30 years in uh, uh, a variety of things. But he was an advisor to South Korean News Army and was involved later on with the return of North, North Vietnamese prisoners of war to the North and also the release of our prisoners from the prisoners of the North. Uh, so that will be on the right of April. The 16th of April, not really a coffee and conversation. But a visit by the American Military Women's History uh, Group and also the Mile High Fight and Drum Corps. And we're kind of titling American Military History Through Time. And what we'll have is their reenactors dressed up in the equipment of different theories of our uh, history and be positioned here. If the weather's good, we'll be outside. If the weather's less good, we'll have kind of a Exhibits and stuff inside. And that would be from about 10 to 2. Uh, they'll visit us several times in the past, and it's always uh, fascinating. And so the 16th, uh, hopefully, we'll come and visit for that. <coughs> and then the last one for April, the 23rd, Tracy and Harry. Uh, Tracy's been an Air Force veteran of frequency and superior, and he's going to talk to about Jimmy Hoover, uh, the American hero. And that also is tied in with our new forefathers exhibit upstairs, which actually will highlight the steel ray, uh, the existence of it, uh, so shortly after the Pearl Harbor. So we really hope you all are able to join us for that. And then we just want to thank all of you, you know, for coming in. Your donations, your membership to this event makes this all possible. Not to mention the support from the city and the many great uh, grant providers uh, that help us uh, currently and over the years. I think that's about to do it. Bob, please come forward. Uh, we have you know, Bob's handout, uh, uh, which has the background. Well, it should already be. Let me go. No, it should be. It should be. Oh, you did. Yeah. Yes, you've already been There we go. Yeah. I told you. Oh, that's right. That's his. I've had so many very activities and positions within the Air Force that rather than focusing on any one of them, I treated it as how do I get from Mama Rose, little boy Bobby, to the arrogant ass you see before you now? <laughs> so, um, anyway, it's a matter of, of uh, okay, if I remember this, I do that. Uh, I was born in Wisconsin, uh, and many of uh, many of my mother's uh, family is still in the Marshfield and Tilly area. My dad was born in North Dakota, and uh, his family moved back to Wisconsin, into Appleton, 
but we were out of the break. My dad was a firefighter <laughs> and uh, uh, moved out to Wolfboy, Montana, which is uh, the, rest of the Indian reservation for the Sioux and the Assiniboine tribe. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, about uh, my junior year, we moved to Lewistown, and I graduated then from Fergus County High School. Go Eagles. Golden Eagles, by the way. And uh, I, I married, uh, I'm glad to have Sharon here. Uh, she was a school teacher at the time, and I'm not going to get into the tales, but I love to tell the tales of how we met and all this other stuff. <laughs> we won't do that, Bob. <laughs> But, but, I had, but I have a military family. I mean, they were born everywhere. Shala is my eldest, and she's here. Uh, she was born at Lake and Heath in, in the UK. That is back to the right path, and Don Michelle came along. And uh, she now lives in Erie. Uh, Joanne uh, Dallas. How come it says Holly Joanne? It doesn't say Holly Joanne. I must have said that. <laughs> <laughs> Operator Reserve. <Yeah. laughs> Holly lives in, in uh, Lincoln, and she was born at Eglin when I was uh, down there in Florida. And then, uh, because we forgot to use birth control one in our life, along came Troy. And he was born, he was born at uh, when we were stationed at Nellis in, in Las Vegas. Um, after I retired, uh, I got to work for ET out of uh, Las Vegas. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about that later in the program if we get to it. And they, they sent me down to Las Cruces because they, um, we, had, we had two jobs. So the first one we had in Las Cruces was uh, the stealth fighters were just being activated. And uh, they needed to have a process for measuring how stealthy stealth fighters are. So they asked ETG to, to put together a, uh, a uh, radar farm. Uh, we had, I think, 75 radar antennas above Trinity site in the White Sands. So that took us down to Las Cruces, New Mexico. That fell apart because the Air Force, was, or not the Air Force, but the military, it was so inefficient. Uh, they decided, no, 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 you guys have got a good plan, but we have to do an environmental assessment. And in order to do that, you've got to have three other viable sites. So we wound up having to go out to China Lake, we went to uh, uh, St. George, Utah, and we had to look down in Texas every time. And every one of them had to be done to the same level of scrutiny, and so it did cost us some part of business. So we wound up not being able to put together that, uh, that radar set. So one of the TG and G said, Steve, Robert, well, you're so good down there. Why don't we send you down to White Sands? We've got a subcontract on there. So I wound up having uh, five uh, test sites at the White Sands. One of them, I claimed to have the third largest tank fleet in America, but it was all of the tanks that were renovated and were used as targets. <laughs> and so I, I had some crew. And now, I mean, these guys, I mean, these were. The guys that I had working out there, they were sort of a tough lot. They, they, were, they were motorcycle gang things. <laughs> and so you, you, you go on out there and they were fun. And they, that's one of the things that was probably one of my, my failings was I was not strong enough in discipline. Uh, these guys uh, thought it was funny when we had one of the uh, DOE investigators come out. And uh, to, to the, where they were working, and they thought it was neat to put a rattlesnake in their pickup. <laughs> <laughs> I did not fire them, and that was probably a fault of mine. <laughs> then they, that, put, that brought us up here to, uh, I've been here now for nearly 30 years. For, uh, yeah, in 19, 23, we'll be here 30 years. 
Now it was brought up to uh, as a mix five of uh, those who were imported by EP and B to stay brought here. In other words, their construction team was not being managed well. So they brought in five of us in a decent amount of time that this happened. So he came, he said, Thank you very much, Robert. Where are you going to work next? And they left me for, how long were we out of the job then? Six months or less, something like that. But they said, Would you mind going off the rocket bus and taking over uh, work for Gene Ball and, and, and uh, at the uh, uh, engineering building on Rocky Plus. <laughs> so that's where I was, and we developed, as, as uh, the last thing on that, uh, the D&D right. &D of uh, Rocky Plus, which I put together, uh, I was, I had to be a computer with the back and way back, and so they, uh, they had me uh, on this five-band team, uh, Ned Hopkins was the, the chief of it, and we decided uh, that we needed to have a plan. The plan for EP and D was Rocky Glass get shut down in 2032. Kaiser Hill came in and said, no, no, no. We went, could you put together a plan that could do it in 2010? So five of us in the Ah, okay, we got 2010 down. Is this year, could you do it perhaps by 2006? <laughs> <laughs> okay, a little bit of overtime, a little bit of good moving around. Okay, we got 2000. How about 2004? <laughs> 2004 got a little bit dicey, and then we had to work multiple shifts, working at night, and it became too expensive. So they asked, they asked me to go back to the 2006 time, and they, uh, uh, and that's essentially what took it. Now, what that entailed is that we, we had to design the canister that carries all of this radioactive dirt from here down to Carlsbad, New Mexico, and get buried in the salt pit down there. Mm -hmm. And we had to figure out how we were going to do that. So we had to design those trucks and containers. So that's what we did. That was, uh, that's how I got, I got to, to where I am. Now, as you mentioned, I'm a member of both the uh, fifth state, and I, I forget how long, many days ago it was, or many years ago. Uh, Santa Ray had a plan to have a program for veterans. So they invited us to have one house, and this is a part of the that, that I had for that. And it, well, you can you can ask me about the yeah. American Legion, and that's that's all the things we do with with uh, 58. But then, and I can point to some of my history. My career, I talk of this, I was, I, I, yes, I uh, retired as a major, but I was an enlisted man first, uh, Mustang, and some of them called it, I don't know, I don't know what call it Mustang, but uh, I was an enlisted first. Then I went to the prep school, and, and a lot of the young kids talking to high school kids, what do you do in the prep school? Air Force Academy, and I'll reach everybody here in Colorado knows about the Academy. Uh, they took the blue from the sky and the pretty girls' eyes. And, and now they're going to go all the girls' Air Force Academy to that. <laughs> but, and then a after I graduated from the Academy, then I went on to the, the training, the navigator uh, at, and bombardier training, getting into flying the F 4. Combat and Laos, and which, by the way, can I mimic uh, Joe Biden a little bit? This is a secret war. <laughs> 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 so, uh, 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 <laughs> anyway, we were my, my war was the Vietnam era war. My war was really a uh, barrel war, which, which was northern Laos. And then uh, after that, then uh, they shipped me out 10 years to Europe. And with that, I had a uh, TDY to uh, Turkey, Italy, and Spain. And uh, talked a little bit, uh, talked to them, to the kids about the Sharon's uh, wife and how supportive the, uh, the wives of are when the uh, military goes on TDY. That, uh, 
among other things, they, they did what Torah was done before. I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> well, she went to a, they had a uh, OI club, and they go to meetings while the husbands are gone, and they had a phone read. <laughs> you had three girls and a boy. Well, at the time, I had a, a female guinea pig, a female uh, guppy, a, a goldfish, a two female dogs, and uh, and then three daughters. <laughs> and so there were more males in my family at the time. So when they said that the next one's going to be a boy, I was pretty <laughs> Which we found out about because I was later I was on an exercise I went to Fort Bragg to represent the Air Force at a, at a big exercise and went to payphone. I don't know if you people remember payphone. Put your order in and wow, straightness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here he is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nuclear, I'm rather jealous. A nuclear weapons, post nuclear jealous, Area 51, West Bank, uh, range, and rocket flight. Those are the things we're going to talk about. Actually, I've got them. Uh, this is my little box of life. Uh, the list is just a little bit about when I was in. Basic training was a shock to me. <laughs> I came, came in out of high school. You know, I was not prepared to get standing at attention to have somebody beat on my stomach uh, with, a, with his fist. And just because I'm, you know, as you see, I'm much younger looking then than I am now. And uh, they wanted to make sure I grew up mature. And so there, there was a little bit of shock to me. I went on to Shepherd. Uh, we talked about the punch card machine operator. At the time, uh, I was growing up, a lot of people, well, we've got, I, you know, I've got my, whatever it is, here it is. It's got everything, uh, all the calculators there. Well, I'll show you the, the calculator we used then was this guy. <laughs> now, and, you know, I'm going to be in the meetings occasion. Well, did you have a post or a K and E? Yes. This, this is a K and E. The K and E is a plastic one. The post, which cost twice as much, was a bamboo one. So that's, so that's what we had. Uh, prep school, uh, the big thing on the bus trip home. When I was, uh, well, we'll talk about it, uh, let's see. My first duty assignment, yeah, we can talk here, uh, was at, at Mather, and uh, while I was there, the officers were installing a, a, a new computer. Well, new computers at that time were three times the size of this building, this room. I mean, it was, it was multiple. They, they were back, and, they were, and it was all little widgets here and there and everywhere. Whereas I'm up there with my punch card, and, and that was, uh, we had a picture about the, uh, the uh, Hello Girl. Where the uh, the operators that helped in, in World War One would, uh, would take the telephone and you call up and you talk to the the operator and she'd hook you up by a wire. Well, that's basically what the punch card machines are. You you, you take the wires and you switch them around and you read. There's 80, 80 columns on a punch card and then the last uh, I think six. Uh, to identify the number of the cards. So this first 74 are the information that we put on it. So that's, meanwhile, I'm sitting here working on this computer, and I'll show you a little bit about that in a little bit. And I told my first sergeant, King, call me in for an interview. Well, I had joined the Air Force with the intention of marrying my girlfriend from high school. And in order to do that, you have to afford it. And so uh, my folks couldn't afford to send me to college. And so I wound up saying, well, gee whiz, aviation cadet sounds like a good, good idea. So I volunteered to, I joined the Air Force with the intent of going into the aviation cadet. Um, got down to Lapland, done a basic training. Second week, aviation cadet program has been passed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> so that's the reason I went. Then they had me. Then I had to choose, and I chose the uh, tech training because that was sort of the computer thing coming on. And so that's the reason I got into that. But anyway, I go and I explain this in my first church, and he says, "Well, did you ever consider going to the Air Force Academy?" No, I was not. You can't go there. Well, yeah, you can if you're if you, if you can be 2050. I think it was the range. You can drive to 2050, and not only that, they had just gotten this advertisement about a new school that the Air Force Academy started called the Prep School. And so I applied, and I was selected. Well, although I was told I was selected, and you have a report date and everything else, it was, uh, I think, a, a two or three weeks of taking period before. So I called my dad and I said, meet me in Philly. Okay. Now I'm sure he thought I just got kicked out of the airport. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he came down and he, he knew Kyle Patrick down in Philly and said he went over to the other And they said, well, come on and, and talk to my mother, Doc. He said, well, come on, we got to get on. And so they went down to, to a bar next to the, the bus stop. Well, in I come. And just it was a, a point of joy to see my mother scrambling on all fours to get out of that booth. <laughs> and, uh, and then I had to explain to him that, you know, I didn't get thrown out of the airport, that I wasn't just going to the Then I was in Academy class of 67. Now I'm class number nine. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about some of those, those people as we get into other movies. That, and then after graduating from that, then we go to NAV, a NAV school. Now then I go back to where we have been at Mather here. Mather is where we, we get your navigator training and your volunteer training. Well, going to NAV school, you have to memorize the location of 63 stars. Now, one of those just happens to have the name of the star. The name of my guy said, I wrote a star. It's a star. And then after that, then uh, uh, and we'll get into the transmission next. Uh, survival training, sea, and gear in combat, and tiger attack. And we can get on. So and those, those are just the basics. Now this is this is your punch card. Go to your card book. Now you can imagine the impact this has on a young kid who hasn't been drunk before in his life after a big softball game, being inebriated, and watching those things flash up and down. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> So then after that, then I was accepted then to the second uh, prep school class, class between 62 and 73. Now, the, the training <coughs> that you get at the prep school is you get military, uh, you march in, you march the meals, you uh, learn command, you have a command structure, you have a, uh, I was the uh, sea flight commander. And the fellow that was the deep flight commander was a fellow by the name of Max Oldman, which is one of the highlights I'll get to in the story. And uh, also at, the, at this, what, what you learn is you build a sense of unit. And of the 150 of us that went to the prep school, 112 of us graduated. Now of that 112, 104 of us went to the Air Force Academy. Uh, one, my, my roommate, uh, went to the Coast Guard Academy, and the others went to pretty much even split between West Point and Annapolis. Uh, now, the education is solely on math and English. Now, when you deal with, when you start off with, and, and the, the, the guy that started this, uh, Colonel Fox, he was a math instructor. And he started out with, you didn't learn math when you started, you learned arithmetic. <coughs> and, you, and you learned tricks on, on what, how the percentages and fractions and all this other. 
she learned arithmetic, not math. And it went on to, over that course of that year, fortunately, when I went to the academy, I didn't break a book for the first uh, three times, or I guess the fourth, I never did it, but the next year I did. I finally got into a course called statistics, who was taught by the very same uh, colonel been elevated from the prep school up to the academy, and I got a C in that one. Now, other than that, I got three years without breaking a book. So it was pretty effective uh, training. Sports, cross, you learn cross country track, and uh, I played uh, basketball <coughs> and baseball in high school. But they needed to have, they had a soccer team, and I'll tell you who I am, this is playing basketball on a football field. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's, that's why I learned soccer and I kind of went on. That was at the prep school. You know, Colonel Black, located on the campus at the Air Force Academy. Uh, mission to prepare motivate for admission. They have for 57. I pay all of those things. That's nice information, but uh, Prep school. Now, these four guys are four that have had major influence on my military career. All four of them are on the Vietnam War Memorial. Dennis Casey was uh, uh, Dennis Casey. Doesn't say when he was born. I thought he did. No, that's true. Sixty-seven. He was he was my best friend in high school. And he and I uh, had a major debate because it was nineteen sixty and the election of Kennedy and Nixon. He and I were Nixon, his girlfriend Charles Wally. And signed them up and said they were Kennedy. I think we won the election. I won the debate, but the we don't want the president. Dennis called his mother, Mom, I'll be home next Thursday. The next day, Grenade went into the foxhole with him. He jumped on the foxhole, saved the rest of his unit. Stop it. Home the next day. Uh, Hal Henderson. A lot of, lot of, uh, lot of this talk is about being the fact, former air control. What they found is that the Army troops needed help speaking their voice. And so what, what you had is uh, small airplanes. And uh, Shala's daughter is, is, uh, took me up on the flying. And I, I was amazed airplanes could fly that small. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you're up there, you're doing touching along, doing about 100, 110 miles an hour. But you're above everything, and so you have the visual aspect, and you'll see it in one of the movies I'm about to do now. You can, you can see on, uh, down below, you've got world view, and you can identify where boxes are and, and see where targets and personnel and all this other stuff. Whereas the crew, the, the flight crew that come in to bomb these things, and I was part of that, uh, you get the. Uh, Go ahead, and if you would, pass off those, those pictures. Just a little bit. These are the, this is what you're dealing with as, as far as, as seeing, seeing targets. And you can look on the one side, look on the back side of, of each of these, and you'll see uh, what the target is. It, it gives a little bit of what you're looking at. Uh, look on the back of it as a, let's say, truck park or bridge or whatever. And you can tell this is very, rather difficult to see. So if you're coming along, you're getting shot at, you're getting, you're trying to keep from getting knocked out of the air, and, in, and you're trying to find this target. And it was, uh, 
to say, and you got some, and you got to set up so that you're coming in to this conference. Well, that, that became multitasking for, for a lot of people. So they went to this thing called the forward air control, which was the army would say where the target was. So you knew where the, they didn't have to find it. They would radio up to this slow moving airplane, cut them along doing a, a slow flight. And then he had three radios, one, one that would talk to the guy on the ground, one that would talk to the, air, the airplane coming in, and, and one that would talk to, to, to uh, equipment or the uh, aircraft controller. So he had, he had three mics going on, but he would, he would then go in, say, there is a box sitting down, I want you to knock out that box, and he would throw a white phosphorus uh, uh, rocket down there. And, and hopefully you know, get my smoke and the target, the, the bombers could come in and, and hit it. Now, Al was one of those raving, slow moving guys. Unfortunately, he was shot down on a mission out of the land in, in, uh, in South Vietnam. Al Rosen, or Matt Rosen, we're going to talk about a little bit later. He was sea flight commander at prep school when I was a sea flight commander. I was sea flight commander. And he went on, he was in my class then at GCAD, in class of 67. And we'll talk about him and his mission. And I have a, an extended, extended movie of the attempt to recover the Boxer 2 2, which is when he got shot down. Uh, unfortunately, the, the movie I have. As a full Boxer 2 2 Bravo out. Even the Boxer 2 2 Bravo. Uh, it was a, a, Christmas, a Christmas season event when we were flying. I was still flying uh, strike missions. And on guard, you would listen to the story of Boxer 2 2. And uh, it would come up on the radio once in a while. And on the last day, it says, well, they know where I am. I see them down below at, at the uh, river. And they're coming up, and you heard crack, crack, and the radio went down. From JIA. The last one of those as, as, as a key, key person is Jim White. Now, Jim White, I, as I said, I played soccer at the, uh, as a freshman at the academy. He was on the varsity. He was also my squadron commander at, at third squadron. I've got, uh, I got my badges up there. You see, be number three. That was our squadron at the end. Now he, because he was on the soccer team, and I was on the uh, the freshman soccer team, uh, the meals at the Air Force Academy are Downing Square. Too high. The, the two of you that are the freshmen, if you will. Uh, they eat square meals, which is to go from plane up in, up down, up down in. The, the table arrangement is the seniors are at the head of the table, and that's who, you, who the, the newest always have to announce everything to the seniors. And next to them come the juniors, and next to them, right next to you, are, are the, uh, the sophomores, the third class. Jim was, Jim was. The head of my table, and he brought in a guest one day, which uh, y'all may have heard of. His name was Ed White. Now, Ed White, you may remember, was one of the three astronauts that were killed in the Apollo fire. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's also the first astronaut to do a spacewalk. So it was impressive to have him sitting at the table and, and being able to do things. So that was. And Jim, I was on, uh, when I was at Karak, I was on the uh, uh, command center, the uh, control center. And when the reports of him came back, he was flying a one of five, but he flew into a, he flew into a problem and he never came out. He was also an outside some time, sometimes. Those are the four guys that uh, pretty much have the most influence on me. That's Matt Rosen a little bit about him after 19 years of service, including the years of prep school. 
But the lower pilot wings are too great. He went on to become a vaccine. Uh, and he flew, he flew our U bomb. They were, they were, uh, the place that he went down was a place called Deer Pass. And we had party suits, which commemorate. And he and Deer Pass was sort of a joke pass. It was, it was a hotbed of, it was where the supply came out of north to Vietnam, went through the Deer Pass, and joined the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Going south to take it down to south, south Vietnam. There's uh, Hal now. Uh, among the things that are important to him, because he's from, of course, Bozeman, Montana, and he from Montana myself, uh, he was all state tackle for the Bozeman team. And he also was a successful ice hockey, played hockey for the Bozeman national team. He's a high representative. Honor. I think that's maybe the one. Now, then there's his cadet. And I talked to Julie did a soccer and baseball. Baseball team manager said that I, I guess they thought I was shooting off, even though I thought I was, I was hitting better than anybody else. It just wasn't big enough to throw the glass out there, so I wound up being the team manager and statistician there. Again, I leave my security work. Honor. When he entered the Air Force Academy, he issued contracts. Now, this is the contract, that, this is mine, it's the original. And in it, there's a history of the Air Force, on, and there's a list of the Army Corps. But there's also, at the very back, all of these quotations. It's part, part of the, the way we the academies work to build stress, put a person under stress, and yet, you know, it's not dangerous or hazardous. So you have to memorize this stuff. And you, and give, tell me the uh, George Washington quotations on, on uh, swearing. Okay, that's in here. That's one of my favorites. There's the uh, uh, preamble to the Constitution. Yeah, there's the number. That, that you have to remember that are listed. I, I forget how many there are. Uh, so you're standing in the dance unit and you're getting your butt busted. Oh man, they're in your face and they got their nose about that far away from you. They're yelling and screaming. And, if you, and so that's the stress that you're under. And if you don't respond well, give me 10. Well, then I'm doing pump pumps. Then I'm doing pump pumps. And so, and not only that, but the other thing is, if you go to the academy and you spend, you go on the, the, the garden, you're looking down over the air garden and everything else, see the Zulis, they want, they're running on the marble strips. You have to stay on that marble strip and you have to square corners and you're marching the whole time. Whereas all the other guys just talk to them and then come over and be a but anyway, that's, that's, that's sort of how you build stress in an academic environment. But the honor code, you will not lie, cheat, lie, steal, or cheat, nor tolerate among us anyone who does. I was there for the first two major honor candles at the academy. And the first one, 130 feet to that. Now, and the first one, number two guy, the, the, uh, the wing deputy commander, in other words, a cadet that was a, a senior, um, was, on, was a star on a football team. He resigned, not because he did it. What, what had happened? Because of, it's like playing football, and you've got all these academic stresses, and you've got to pass the test, and you've got to know all of this, and it, people are running out of time. So one of the, one of the uh, football players decided it would be a good idea to fail the academic judges go in and play the test. <laughs> <laughs> Well, 
commander did not, he did not want to win, but he knew that they had done it, and he was one that wound up losing for my followers among us. In my case, it's one of my for four years. I had a place for 50 minutes. For four years, I did not like him. He was a father and one of those people. I guess I had liked him. I guess I had to. But I learned the value of it at the time, and I regret it now. You know, when I thought about it, there was a chance to end up and I betrayed my, uh, my friend. There we go. Let me jump back to what I looked like in the back. If that doesn't look like a little laugh, I don't know. I'm going to say it because I see it in the school family. This is this is a picture my my folks were coming into the academy. This is when I was in the in the life movement and my now I, I just received word they set up a pool over the over the chapel right now. And they are repairing it. Uh, I think the capacity for the organ Amazing how this has become still in the way of graduation pending on it. So my sister Carolyn, finalized, and that is going to be transmitted to us. Now, one of the things that people talk about, oh my God, you need to do that. Because they're coming in. They could have one graduation where they threw at the Vanderbilt Hall, which is the housing. They do a little bit back and they broke all the windows. <laughs> 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 that's a good I don't I don't know whether whether my dad came or whether the focus or whether it was time for uh, to recuperate. There I am by that line. Yeah. Okay. There's the guy ahead of you because he he's speaking to you at my moment. <coughs> Rich, by the way, uh, uh, I learned a little more about it. In fact, I, we'll talk a little bit about aviation because that's here in a little bit. But uh, I learned that Lou was a jet uh, and people that were, uh, well, he graduated a month ahead of the people. He had gone to the Air Force to fight in the Air Force Academy and had been not one of the, the nominees. And then, so he wanted to be an aviation cadet. He graduated a month ahead of him. They all just believe him and there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. This is the 100. This is when the uh, Thunderbirds were flying 100. Mm -hmm. And that'll be good. There you go. Here. 
don't know what the good times are going on, going this afternoon, but that's what I'm going to go on. There's a picture of the movie, isn't it? Okay, then, then you get into active duty. So then, from after receiving my uh, uh, commission, then I go to NAV school from 67 to 68. I'm in uh, bombardier training uh, from 68. No, in bombardier training, we had a 3.9 that had the, the same bomb uh, system that they used in, in, excuse me, a C-29 that they used in the B-17 Europe. So that's what we're learning to my favorite target was the nurse's dorm at Corvallis University of Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the northeast, uh, excuse me, the southeast corner of the, of the dorm. Uh, we went on uh, radar systems. Uh, David talked about he's going to speak on that a little bit. Uh, sea survival, survival training, jungle survival, snake school, we call it. Uh, Squadron Officer Air School in 72. I got my master's degree from the Air Force at the Air Force Institute of Technology. I had a great job, and then uh, I completed, completed the fifth man of staff at the correspondence school. Duty assignments uh, uh, Lackland, as I said, Pepper Crew Tech School, Mather, Prep School Academy, NAV School at Mather, NAV. Uh, Getting the uh, now, now my when I got to uh, Karak, I had four hours of flying in the F four. My uh, pilot was my sixth hour of flying in the combat. So I we came in rather inexperienced. I then became an, an, an instructor among the first of the was it, at the time I was. They call us uh, navigators. Uh, they decided well, they upgrade us and become WSOs. The uh, Navy call, what is the Navy call? Rio. 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 Rio was Air Defense Command. I got that up here. Well, Rio, that was specific to the F 4, but NFO in general translates from the Air Force to navigators. Okay. Is it a naval flight officer? Naval flight officer. Flight officer. Okay. Then after a right late pass, when I got down to Edmund, uh, I'm trying to get Holly born. Uh, Air Force weapons, uh, instructor weapons, I became that. Uh, what, uh, Edmund was split in two sites. There was the uh, Air Force weapons lab. Is the majority of the base, but there was a detachment, and it's the same detachment that I deployed from to go uh, to Karak. Uh, I went back to that, but now they have transitioned from being an air to mud or a bombing uh, mission to an air to air. So that's where we got to go fly uh, south of. Uh, we have two missions. My alert mission at Edmund was to go out and help the Coast Guard identify and track drug traffickers. And so you, I, I remember taking off on one of those alert missions and showing the bus me for starting the car and not having my seatbelt. <laughs> well, if you can imagine doing it at 200 miles an hour, taking off in a jet, and you still wouldn't have your seatbelt. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I'm one of those alert missions. Took off and we went into a little bit of a bank of down. And there's a dang 10 foot shark right down there, just right off the end of the line. <laughs> and our, our uh, the eject area, if you got into trouble that didn't, and you couldn't land at Edwin, you were going down to Tampa. Well, the ejection site for Tampa, if you have to get your airplane, in one of the most highly populated shark infested waters <laughs> in the Gulf. So <laughs> well, uh, Air Force instructors, I go from uh, from Edmond, then go over to Bora Home, do a, a few TDYs there, and I get to the uh, nuclear weapons lab. Uh, I'm a unit commander at Capone. Now, 
the guy who was just brought us to get the uh, listen to Tony Auto aircraft. Uh, my job was to get the Tony Auto aircraft for the Germans and the Italians to be able to carry because they were accustomed to using the 104 that American nuclear weapons that they were sitting right now. So what they, we needed to do was develop the bombing system that would uh, um, allow the, the nuclear weapons to be controlled and then and released. So you had, you had both the, the class of the, the, the thing that the, the president wanted to run, the suitcase that he wanted to run with, is a series of numbers. That, that you have to have that series of numbers done in a proper sequence and, and a few other things in order to get to uh, to be able to release your nuclear weapon. Now there's a reason for that. When I was sitting alert at Aviano in Italy, uh, the story was well known that one of the 100 drivers who uh, were sitting there alert a, a few years before that, they decided this is a neat. I wonder if this is what it is. So he takes off and he buys, uh, and he goes into a design Romania, I think, with Coleski and all those other things. <coughs> Coleski was, I think, the target, which was uh, under Soviet control. And so he goes up, and I think it was uh, Romania, as I said, and flies in down in. Well, our Air Force can't say anything about it. They're all not. We're not going to admit that somebody did that. Romanians and the Soviets, they can't admit it. They said, oh, he can do it. And I, we can't let anybody know. So the guy got away with it. I was carrying a 61, B-61. Now, we also, we also had B-57. Uh, I carried out of a nuclear work at uh, Woodbridge in England. And that was in the 70s, uh, 74. And then uh, when I was at the uh, at Toro Home, uh, we went off, we <coughs> went over to uh, uh, Aviano and to and to Inter. And Turkey. Now at Turkey, I know we just we got the problems with uh, Ukrainians right now. One of our missions there was to go to North Turkey on a TDY station. While the Navy did their annual cruise of the Black Sea. Now, the, the U.S. Navy needs to prove that the uh, uh, Black Sea is not the Soviet ocean. Now, so, so they go to Nathan, I don't know how, probably two, three days, and bring it out. But in the meantime, it was a, it was a tense time. There was some pressure and the Soviets were making noises. And so they shipped us up north, armed with their air weapons, uh, to go up and potentially uh, defend the uh, U.S. fleet as it sailed with the Black Sea. Then we came, came back out of that, became a senior technical officer at uh, Nellis Air Force Base. There is where I learned to become an editor. Uh, I was, uh, all of these reports and everything, they put together in a, in a paper. And so I had a, a fellow that had been doing it for many years, taught me a lot about doing editing. So that's how, how my career told my daughter's school paper. <laughs> <laughs> retired from, uh, retired from now, went to ETG in Las Vegas. Uh, interesting tour, tour there, we'll talk about that later, Las Cruces. We talked about and finally just uh, lost his friend. Bob, would you explain what EEG is? Oh, of course. <laughs> EEG and T is Edison, Mermaid Housing, and Greer. <laughs> <laughs> now that those are what the initials stand for. It is a an a military industrial complex uh, organization that was put together and I forget what Edison's first name was. But he was a high-speed photography expert, and and Vermeshausen was a one of his associate engineers. And Greer, um, they worked on the Manhattan Project, 
And where are the guys that signed up at the training site before the first uh, nuclear explosion? Where's the guy that hooked the wires up at the very end? So he's up there hoping to start that thing from now. But anyway, that, that's where it was. And he, at the time, they were, I think they were maybe the largest uh, non aircraft producing uh, military industrial complex company. Uh, we were everywhere. Until uh, Clinton came into office, gave us the, I mean, we took over at Rocky Flats. We took over from, uh, who was it that, uh, who, who was there before? Warren? No. University of California. No, 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 no. It's, it's one. Uh, 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 I'm trying to think of who. It was. It was another one. One of those industrial complex companies. Anyway, the, and before Price of Hill. Anyway, Rocky Flats came in, and I think our uh, uh, plan was to put it down. Put Rocky Flats down by 30 feet. That was their thing. Um, Sure, I don't know. 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 I don't As AAA Arrowhead. This is Arrowhead and Roadrunner. You see, uh, come on, you see the little white dots, the red dots coming up? Mm -hmm. That's them too. Mm -hmm. so, and, and if they're moving, it's okay. Because if they don't move, you got to really work. So here they come, and they're starting to get closer here now. And they come over, that's Arrowhead to the left. It looks like an arrowhead. Down below, we'll, we'll see, we'll see uh, where the floor is. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. There it is. There's a little guy. He's still raised in the, in the planning, planning drawing. And we can stop there. That's all of that. And I, I talk about, now, I, I'm going to, I've got the three of those book ups. Uh, circulating around, and that's the, the tiger fast. I'm going to give that to the museum because the fast moving fast. And the ravens that I talked about earlier, you know, flying along, possibly going at 100 miles an hour and having people shoot at you, they would not nearly as fun, especially when they get to the environment of wildlife where they're shooting you. Uh, well, this is a this is a plane. This is, Plane that we have that's, a, uh, that's smaller than the 23 that they shoot at. This is a 30, which is smaller than the 37 that they shoot at. But this is, uh, and actually, if I continue to be seeing the pictures of a lot shooting of this at down on, on the river. And that's, those, are, those are the things. So, anyway, those ravens, they, they were too slow and they were too vulnerable. And so they started using the spider to go in and identify the target. And that's the reason I had it out for pictures. That's what we would study. We would know where the targets were. You'd get caught on the map behind my feet. Actually, the one I flew with, and one of the, the, the many uh, maps that I flew with. And it goes off, and off to the left, it shows Arrowhead, I think, is down on the left. That was that lake that I just showed you. It tells you the coordinates because when you go to credit calls up and says, okay, you got a flight coming in, and so you got to read the instructions. This is the, the, the book that I, that I would read them for one. I'm what the type of target was, what the target elevation was, the nearest, the highest terrain within 10 miles, so you can go into it. The alternative setting. Tell them everything. 
uh, bomb minister out of the north of Japan, out of the, you know, whatever. Uh, enemy defenses. Best day loss, best running ahead, and whatever. That's sort of the standard reason. And then after that, you did a, then we did a BDA test, which would tell you what the target was, how much damage was done, and so forth. Now, I've got over there two of my, uh, my two of my DSPs. I, I wish I had the. Uh, okay, this is uh, one of my missions that's written up in, in that book that, that I'm hanging out. This is Dave Volvo with me. And you can see that. Oops, let's go back. That, that little piece, I've got somewhere in the house. Certainly when I look all over, and I, I don't know where that is. But that little piece of metal. We were above a cloud, and there was a hole. And we dropped down into that hole. Well, they've been practicing shooting at that hole for a while. So, they knew it really well. so when we got that boom, they, they, they got it. So they said, oh, crap, I can't, you know, we're in a dive, so they throttled it back. They're not all the way back, but they're back. And I can't, I can't go any closer. So now we're going the one that we've been hit, we've been hit, uh, and there's a flash right there. I talked about the uh, light in the wind. I don't know how to say it. We'll talk about light in the wind. But uh, he was still flying a flashlight to the VR for to take those pictures. And, and they joined up on it. Because you're flying alone. As a tiger, you're alone. And so you join up with him, they escort us back to you want to take a uh, prime uh, barrier, uh, you know, we call the fire uh, the Navy pilot that will do it. But we, we're, we're taking barrier landings on land, not on land, barriers. But anyway, we took it and, uh, and then we took the picture of this one. This is one I'd like to show, but it's, it's 25 minutes, so I'm not going to. <laughs> but and I can't go. This, this is where this is uh, the story of uh, uh, Matt Grogan. I, I told you the one of the, the four guys with the hats on. This is the story of the Cubby. Now the, the Cubbies were um, a slow-moving uh, Korean War fighter that had armament, and their job was to suppress the triple A so that the helicopters could come in and extract down the line. And that's what this particular uh, movie is all about. And that shows the movie. Now, this is, I later go on to flying in Europe, and you get to see some funny things. This is it. This, now, this is an interesting thing. Now, Mike was a West Point grad that joined us at Major when we were going to Nashville. And he was in the back seat of the car, flashlight, and I was a tiger. And uh, he and his wife, when Sharon and I moved to England, we, we were on a three year tour and they stayed at us all for four years. Well, at the same time, they were kicking people in, but not kicking people out. And so there was no place to go to live. So, uh, so I did find a place that we could rent. It was 40 miles, 40 minutes north of us at Norwich. And it was the Alex apartment in a fast school. So we talked to, to Bruce John, a friend of ours, and they said, well, why don't you just buy it? So we went ahead and, and bought a house. And in, in the course of buying the house, uh, we were waiting to be able to move into that house, and we took a trip down to Switzerland. Mike and his wife uh, were at uh, Alkenberry, I believe, and they came down at the same time and, and met us then in Switzerland, so we had a good time. Then later, he goes on to become a, uh, he goes to Athens, uh, Master of Heritage, and he becomes a, a uh, uh, he volunteers to become a test engineer out at, uh, um, Edwards. And from that, then he went on to become a assistant John Tabala. He, he was selected for NASA, and he flew three shuttle missions. Uh, I can flash that out. 
Oh, I'm going to tell the Lord, brother. I don't think you can get to know just as many of the way I used to see the well as a super sign went well at Plano Home and Thompson Tennessee. One of the problems was Bob on uh, uh, because of his turtle or triple injected that. When they were released, some reason or another, some of them went up and flew in to the horizontal stabilizer you know, at, the, at the tail end of the airplane. Was uncomfortable. <laughs> 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 so, uh, that, and then, and then what we used was a laser altimeter, which measures dust particles going through the intersection of those three, those three laser beams. Later, the component, and that's and that's pretty almost down to the end of the time. Uh, this is the the Pearl aircraft with, with three variations. Was the English, which is down at the bottom, and the German in the middle, and the Italian in the top. Now, the two at the bottom, the English were using their own makes, but uh, uh, we were we were developing the bomb system for the Germans. Uh, what was the Italian? Anybody wants to know about Area 51? Oh, no. And we go to Area 51. And we get all these markings. <laughs> so I don't know if there's a market. I, I saw where there were mighty people. I know there is a place where all of this, the stuff that went from Carlos, uh, from the uh, uh, accident, where they keep it, and, and it's behind a, uh, a fence, and it goes into a hill that has a metal door peeking out. Somewhere down in there are where the mountains are. <laughs> 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 but but where, where I was, my job was uh, this was before the stealth fighters were announced. My job was to go up to Area 51, and I had a squadron of mates. The Air Force had a squadron of mates. Now, red flag is the big exercise. Squadron come from all over the world, go to Dallas, you go on up and you fly air to air to air. And you're fighting the T 38s and the S 4s and all these other American airplanes. And all of a sudden, into the fight comes a real mate. And that was our job. Just to get those mates in so that they would up the excitement level. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> this is the white thing that I said I had five sites. That's Trinity site down below. And I uh, had some sort of pictures of my nose, of my tank rather. And then finally, here's post retirement. So this is what uh, uh, Rocky Flash looks like. <laughs> I do have a display panel about uh, my various badges, the uh, awards, and so forth. Uh, I didn't get to talk about my three DSP missions. They were Banyan uh, Three was all of it uh, coming in. They were putting in they were putting in strange uh, bombs. What we had is make mud pits out of the highway coming in from Vietnam and flying the cars to get bombs. So we had to make mud pits out of them. Well, one of, one of these three were heavily defended. The Banyan tree, we were putting in this Banyan tree bike, and they were putting in strange bombs, high, uh, delayed fuses and that type of stuff. So we're flying around, and I'm flying with uh, uh, a fellow that was a, a basketball star at the academy, the crew class academy, and coming around, and I see this parachute gun. I didn't know they were putting out parachute bombs. What's going on here? She went around a little bit. It was an orange and white parachute. Oh, they're going to look at that. And that's what, that's what uh, he, he said. Well, then I know it's people. Banyan, check in. Uh, this is Banyan 4. I think my leader went in. That's, and that's what happened. So that was, that was probably my longest 
definition. I had I spent seven point one of the one of the things you had to do with the driver's side as a navigator, you had to learn to refuel on the tank. So you had to learn to manipulate the, the tools of ignorance. <laughs> and so we got up there, and, and uh, but anyway, it was seven point four hours later, and just before we got we got him out, we got Steve out just before dusk. But in the meantime, uh, the Vietnamese had sent out three guys. Uh, one of them had a gun. He pulled out his pistol. Uh, Steve pulled out his pistol, shot one of them. <coughs> So uh, he got scared at night and he had been just away. So we were glad to get him out of the So thank you. Uh, <laughs> 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 